and welcome back to part six of the uh, War Machine build. Um, it's painting day. Yeah, it's always a fun day when it's painting day. Um, we got all everything sanded and prepped so we can start actually laying uh, the copper color down. We're going to do a, uh, a rose gold, which has a real coppery color to it, but it's real light. It's got more of that yellowish copper more. And then on the, we'll go back and do some highlights around the edges and seams with uh, a copper color called Warm, Pen, uh, Warm Penny. That'll give it that nice uh, <clears throat> tarnished look on some edges there. So let's go take a look. Well, all right, here we are. Um, I went through and uh, did a little black to light block just to make sure, you know, because these bulbs are pretty close and that plastic, this plastic here, it's really uh, picks up the light and glows. So I wanted to just hit around the outsides here and around here so I don't get, you know, because there's going to be a big LED strip going across here. And sorry that I get off camera sometimes. Um, so yeah, I wanted to hit these areas that are going to get, like, and in here where these uh, LEDs are. But it's looking good. Um, everything's going great. We're ready to paint it. Um, she is definitely ready for paint. Um, to mask these, um, all I did is take a little shrink tube because I had just bare bulbs sticking out of there. So all I did is take a little shrink tube that fit right over top, cut it to fit, left a little, you know, good amount of length. Uh, heated it up and just pinched those ends together so that'll protect those bulbs and then these I stuck actual tape uh, it's just really those and then on the uh, eye turret I stuck a little tape in there this looks all good I think my seams are all gone in there but made sure I rescribed or you know redefined the seams for the kind of gooseneck kind of part of the thing here and it makes where the head can actually go up and down. So that looks good. All these seams look really nice. So, but definitely paint will let us know if there's any issues. Only problem, one part I would think would be right there. There might be a little bit of something going, you know, a little bit of a probably hit that with a, a black as well and uh, it'll let me know with the primer so but yeah I'm getting gonna get ready to paint um, like I said I started the light blue for the shallow areas in the oceans around the continents and stuff but yeah I thought that was a good idea I was like what am I, you know trying to grab tape around there or something or put tape in the, in the complete hole but I didn't want to really do that because I wanted to get some black in there and, and uh, I don't mind if the copper is, well I'm actually using a, uh, for the body I'm actually going to use a Deco Arts Rose Gold because it has a very coppery color but it still has that gold that kind of mimic the ship on the movie, it kind of had a goldy, goldish copper so that rose color you're probably not going to see in the camera. We'll give a nice goldish copper, but not too goldish where it looks, you know, like a gold statue floating around. And then I might try to do, uh, then I have this worn penny copper from uh, Deco Arts as well. And I might try to like do some of these edges. And maybe a little bit in here, but definitely these edges come up around here and go around and give it a weathered kind of look, but just with a tarnished uh, copper. And it, it goes pretty good together. I mean, there's the label parts. 
but I think if I missed real light, I can give, you know, and go a little heavier in spots like here where the blasters are, and maybe a little around here, but back here I can go light, you know, but, you know, maybe even the front I can go light, maybe hit some spots in here where it looked like it would corrode a little more, but if I go real light and almost make it like a sunburst kind of vibe, I think it would look really cool. But I don't want it so noticeable or it's like, ah, yeah. But I think, you know, if I go light enough, it might work. We'll give it a try, and if not, uh, just spray over it. But, yeah, I just wanted to show you what that, you know, got all the, these wires taped up, those are taped up. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you where we're at. Everything's lighting good, so yeah, it's time to get over to the, into the spray booth and give her a spray. So, see you shortly. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back. Um, we are at the paint booth. I'm gonna start off with this guy. I came out pretty good. Those seams there. I was kind of worried about there, it's okay. So, I'm gonna do a test spray on this. So let's give it a try. on the first coat because it takes a little bit for acrylics, craft acrylics to uh, cover. They kind of want to blotch like, you know, like water. But if you can spray them finer, you won't have that potential for runs. It won't happen. Definitely in the cool, warm look, but so far just the light coat that 
I just put on there. I'm liking what I chose. It's a little heavy down there, but it'll shrink once it dries. That's the fooling of uh, craft acrylics on so much moisture because you got to thin it out so well to with water to to get it to uh, spray correctly, and not clog. But just that little bit, but I kind of like that blotchy worn look if I was really going to have like a battled up one. Maybe I'll make, buy another one and do a real battled up uh, war machine. But I'm going to let that one sit aside just a little longer because I don't want to overheat where it puddle a little bit, pulled up a little bit down here at the seams. That's okay. It'll, even if it dries heavy, I'm thinking it can kind of look like a weld where this was welded into it. So, you know, let that go. But it should, technically, most of the time whenever I had that happen, it should, uh, once it completely dries, just like it was pulling in all these seams almost level, and they dried right up back out. So that probably should, but a little heaviness there hides that seam from this going in it, and will kind of give it like a welded look it'll be nice and round where the this part joins the flat part of that but we'll let that dry on its own and like I said if you force it if you force it too much uh, you can cause it to want to crack and most of the time that's easy to get rid of, but I need a taller booth or a smaller box. But what I need is a little block of wood, but I used that one base that I used to hold chips up as I painted. I used that for the Cylon Star Base. Just cleaned it up and repainted it and it looks fine. But this will work, I hope. Because I don't know what else. I mean, I have that vise that I can clamp on here. I think for the most part, I'm gonna just handle it by hand and just stick it in the box for uh, stick it in a box for drying. I see a little bit of dusties. Pops clean. A lot of my three scuff a little bit. But what we'll do is we'll do this by hand. Then it'll want to stick to itself better without wanting to run. I got a couple clumps there. They'll sand out if they reside. Seeing a couple seam issues, but. 
seems like the more paint I get on it, the better they get. So. Alright, I'm not going to dare go much more than that. Get my little blow dryer dry. And you should always uh, filter your paints. Try one of these little funnels. Too crazy, you know, worrying about those chunks. I went a little heavy there, that fixed those little seam issues. I might want to dab that with a little paint, but we'll hit that again. But yeah, that, <laughs> it's dry already and that looks good. So, I don't know if I probably should hit a little bit of the top. 
next round. So, I'm not sure I really want to sit her down on that.
overdo it. If it's heavy spots, you don't want to overheat, like I said, because uh, you'll get the cracking and it dries too fast. And we'll let it sit and then we'll go back to the eye turret. Because I think I have enough paint in that jar for that. look for antiquing do the black underneath and then that would look really cool for a worn out kind of ship yeah and then see how all that settled down but filled in some of the creases so that worked really good too heavy because we have a tendency to want to cover like normal acrylics or enamels will cover but it's not going to do that it's going to take up But all right, that's pretty much what I'm going to keep doing multiple times until it covers the way I want. Um, when I come back, we'll do the warm painting around it and uh, see how that looks and see if it gives it a kind of a weathered look to it. So, see you soon. Well, hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, we got the uh, rose gold all on there. It looks really good. So, yeah, I'm really happy with that. It came out really nice. It has enough gold to have that yellowish look like in the movie. But, you know, enough of the rose red to give it that copper thing. And, uh, here's the underneath. But I have a couple of little runs. But those are probably going to get hit up. Because they're not high like that, but, uh, what happens with these metallic paints, especially these water-based acrylics, is you'll get like all the sparkles and all the little flakes 
will settle in, on an edge and you get that weird looks but most of that should be hidden by this because then I got here is a worn or a worn penny from Deco Arts that I'm going to highlight and give it that weathered look so hopefully this works give that a try and see how it looks. I think it's going to work good to give that a little bit of a weathered look to it. Excuse the fan. Just uh, mainly just the cool dust from landing on it. This doesn't have a horrible smell. Let's see, it's going to kind of have a, like a sunburst look to it, I'm thinking. It'll go real light. transition around the edges. Just to give it some type of <clears throat> weathered look and like the leading edges have something going on. Or a little more something for your eye to grab onto since a simplistic shape. But we'll let this dry and then we'll do the top. And then also think about if I want to do anything with the, the actual uh, eye turn. Maybe a little bit around the edge. On the edge here where the eye is. 
but see you soon. Okay, we're back. Um, that came out really good. Really liking that. Yeah. That tied it all in together. And I did a little bit on the uh, eye turret already, off camera. But uh, let's uh, hit this top. Take our time with this. More of just a second ago. to keep it subtle in some areas. And stronger in others. I also try to match. What you did on one side or the other. That's good enough. Trying to see if I got some uniformity. It's hard to really tell because the colors are so close. we're pretty good. Now when that gets a clear coat, that's going to look great. I'm going to put this rod in here and have it hover. I was wondering if I should hit a 
little light coat around this gun turret. And I might just do it. Almost to where I can't see it right now, but it's going to give up something, hopefully. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, when we come back, uh, we'll be starting to, uh, we'll do a clear, but I might have that on there But when we come back and then we'll start doing any little color things I want to do in these areas and start assembling the pieces and getting working on that base. Got that base to paint yet too, so thanks for watching.